Coming to you straight from Fremont, California, this is the Fremont Podcast, dedicated to telling the stories of the past and present of the people and places of the city of Fremont, one conversation at a time. Now, here's your host, Ricky B. Hello, Fremont. You're listening to episode number 32 of the Fremont Podcast. Welcome back, and thanks again for listening to the Fremont Podcast, for sharing the Fremont Podcast. If you find this podcast to be exciting and helpful and just plain entertaining, uh, maybe you could do me a favor. Go to wherever it is that you listen to the podcast and give us a rating, uh, hopefully a five-star rating. And if you can, leave a review so that other people can find out about the podcast and know that it is recommended uh, by you. Also, if you are on social media, you can find us on Instagram and Facebook uh, and even Twitter. So uh, if you would like to hear what's going on and find out more information about the city of Fremont, you can follow us there. Before we get started today, here is a quick word from our sponsor. Gary Williams here. Some friends of mine are making a difference in the community, and one of the ways they're doing that is helping to sponsor this podcast. Petroselli Homes Realty Group is a boutique brokerage service located in downtown Niles. John and Jennifer Petroselli have had the honor of helping countless buyers and sellers make effective real estate decisions to plant their roots, raise their families, expand their wealth, or simply relax and retire. So if what I've described is what you might be looking for in a realtor, I suggest getting in touch with Petroselli Homes on Niles Boulevard in downtown Niles. Well, the housing market is changing quite a bit. I don't know if you've seen it, but if you're interested in selling your home before things change, or if you're interested in buying a home as the market starts to come down, uh, then I suggest reaching out to John and Jennifer Petroselli and seeing how they can help you with that. Well, today I have with me, uh, this is actually a couple that I met uh, early on when I first moved here, 2014, 2015. Uh, A friend of mine was helping them with their business and I had the opportunity of meeting them at that time. And then um, I was excited to be able to have them on the podcast and hear how their business is doing now. Um, And so I have with me uh, the owners, uh, the couple who own Weddings and Dreams, which is a bridal boutique right here in the city of Fremont. Um, I enjoy talking with them. I love their passion. I love their heart for what they're doing. Um, And I learned some new things about their business that I didn't know before. So I was really excited to be able to talk with them, to have them on the podcast, to hear about their business and hear what they're doing. Uh, I'm sure that you're going to enjoy this too. So here is Arnold and Purcell. They're the owners of Weddings and Dreams. Well, today I am at a bridal shop called Wedding and Dreams. Weddings and Dreams? Weddings and, Weddings and Dream. I'm with Purcell and Arnold. They are the owners of Weddings and Dreams. And this um, bridal shop is located in Fremont. Yes. Um, it's good to have you guys. It's good to be here. Well, thank you. Thank here. you for having <laughs> us. <laughs> well, I'm excited because this is not my first time uh, here to the shop. I was here se- quite a few years ago, uh, maybe four or five years ago. I don't know how long it's been. Um, 2014 or 2015, um, yeah. something so it was, like that. So it's been even longer than that. So, um, But I had a friend that was here um, helping you guys with the shop yes. uh, back then, and um, I had the opportunity to meet you guys back then. But I'm excited to be able to uh, have you guys on the podcast now. So um, Arnold and Purcell, tell me a little bit of your story. When did you come to Fremont? Where did you come to Fremont from, and uh, what brought you here? Well, we came from New Jersey, New okay. Jersey City, moved to San Jose in 1993. And then 1993, we had our second son. We bought our first home in Fremont. Okay. In, um, in 1993? In 1993, okay. yes. And then um, our kids uh, grew up here. Uh, they went to America. And the two boys went to America, and the third one went to Washington High. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah, so. And then were, were you also Arnold? Were you also from New Jersey as well? I mean, you yes, came from, I yeah. actually uh, from the Philippines. I came and then went to New Jersey. Okay. And then I picked her up. She was originally <laughs> here. Oh, she was then here. Then I moved here. to New Jersey. Yeah. You went back <laughs> to New Jersey, yeah. and then and then, and then, then you dragged back him here. back here, yes. and then I dragged her back. Oh yeah. Here, so. <laughs> That's great. And we're here since. That's great. So, uh, <laughs> what what got you into the bridal business? I mean, uh, was this something you dreamed about for a long time, or what what got you into this? I mean, it is called weddings and dreams. dreams so <laughs> I don't know. Actually, our friend uh, gave us that name. Oh, okay. Uh, we were looking for a name, and she just said, "How about weddings and dreams?" And okay, it just yeah. stuck. Mm-hmm. What was it about the name that your when your friend said it that really stuck to you? Like, what was it that you really liked about it? It's the dreams. It's, it's like dreams. it's not just a wedding, but it's part of your dream. It's yeah. like a dream wedding, and it just rolled everything up into yeah. a. Because um, so many, so many people uh, when they're young, I mean, this is one of the the significant things that they look forward to when they become an adult is their wedding definitely yeah actually when i was young it's like this is like i didn't think about it until like later on like when i was younger i was like fascinated with weddings so my our house in the philippines is like super close to to a church okay and then you could hear the the bell ringing when there's a wedding oh (laughs) that's cool and you heard that as a little girl yeah and i remember running to church i'll just sit there watch the (laughs) bride walk down the aisle and then i'll go home (laughs) that's awesome so there's fascination like ever since um but yeah so starting the business we were just looking for a side gig because our kids are growing up we needed extra money so we started with tuxedo and barong tagalog which is the filipino shirt okay but the uh, place that we were renting behind this building, they closed down. Oh. So we were like, uh oh. <laughs> this is during the recession. To, we started during recession, 2008. In 2008. <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness. Wow. <laughs> so that's when we started. Um, so, so then. Real quick, what did you uh-huh. do before um, the bridal shop? Did you have other careers? We have other works, yes, yeah. We, so, we have full time jobs. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, um, and this was a side gig initially. Wow. It's a side wow. gig. So I started it with a cousin. So he was, she was managing it a little bit, and then I have another work. He has another work, but then recession happened. He got laid off, <laughs> and then the uh, building closed down. So we were like, okay, what are we gonna do now? Wow. <laughs> so we said, let's just open our own bridal shop. Wow, that's amazing! In the middle of the recession, too. In the middle of the wow. recession, middle yes. Of the recession, yeah. I wow. can still remember that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I know that uh, sometimes when people um, like make a huge change in their career paths, like there's some part of what new that you're doing is is part of what you love to do already. So, like, I mean. Arnold, I don't know if you were into the bridal, uh, or if you even considered this, or was this like like beyond your wildest dreams, or what? What like what did were you excited about it, or were you just following a dream that Purcell had? <laughs> it was just presented to me at that time, I guess, and okay. then recession happened. I got laid off, and then I said, "Okay, well, this is it. This we'll is just it. Push it in." Yeah. Um, so. Were you already in, like, for instance, were you already in the business field or were you doing something else at the time? Um, yes, I'm in the, well, to start, when my mom, when we in the Philippines, we, we have a retail store. We okay. have a okay. store. We have some kind of. Like, like fashion related. Uh, fashion related. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I'm kind of brought up into retail store already too. Okay. So when I came here, um, not, didn't work at retail, uh, work at a factory, so it's still retail, and then, as I said, came to California and then work in automotive. Okay. So, oh, wow. Sales. So, and then got laid off, and then here. <laughs> so, 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 yeah, so you had a little bit of family uh, history with retail in the Philippines. Yes. Then you had sales experience uh Work in automotive sales, yes. is that right? Uh-huh. Now you're selling wedding dresses. Now I'm selling <laughs> wedding dresses. <yes. laughs> what is the biggest? What is the biggest surprise or the biggest um, uh, thing that you learned about this industry or that you um, experienced once you got into this that has been a joy to you? Like, what is it that? You, what's one of your highest moments? I guess, or uh, or something that you hold on to now as being an exciting thing well, that you do. For me, it's the first time I sold a bridal dress okay. by myself. 
<laughs> By I said, oh, I can sell the dress. That's great. That's great. How how long was how long into your uh, business starting did you did that happen? That's the first year. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I as I said, I was put into this, and I said I have to sell a dress. <laughs> And nobody was with me that time. It was just yeah, me. Yeah, when we were starting, we didn't have any uh, staff or sales associates. So it was just associates. you. Yeah. yeah. And, just him. <laughs> and Priscilla, you were on you were on. I have a full time job. Time? Oh, no, you were full time job at the time. I, I have, have the time. a full time job oh. as a business analyst. So wow, it's a different world. Yeah. But my joy here. Yeah. Now that I'm full time here. Yeah. Is every time a bride finds their dress because it is a, it's a tedious process. It's like uh, yeah. it's your. The, your heart, your soul, it's into it. Yeah. Like me as a stylist, it's the same thing. Like I'm so focused on them and them are like so focused on themselves. Yes. And yeah. then when they finally find the dress, it's awesome. Wow. That's awesome. I know I tell you love it. I can tell you love it. Um, so let's talk a little bit about um, the shop. I mean, the shop is a, it's amazing. You've got uh, a lot of dresses in here, but um and, and but you said you started off with tuxedos first. Tuxedos and barong. And barong. So you didn't actually start with uh, wedding dresses no. then. Okay. No. We just ended up with it because the uh, well, it just makes sense. Right. I right. have the tuxedo, we have the barong. Well, mm-hmm. might as well sell the uh, dress too. So <laughs> it just all worked out. So was there a market that you were already aware of that made you interested in doing tuxedos and the barong first or was there uh, was that just something that um, I don't know. So, like, why did you choose that first? Because it seems like most people that do bridal, they might start with the wedding dresses and then add the tuxedos. Uh, a later. friend uh, introduced us to the tuxedo business. Okay. And then she said, "Hey, there's a place that wants to sell his business or her business. Okay. In a tuxedo. So we looked at it. We said we looked at each other and said, okay, so this is the side gig that we were probably looking for." And then when we were there, we're inside a bridal store. Okay. Okay. And we're renting a space from that bridal store, and that's the bridal store. Oh. That, yeah. Okay. And that's how it started. That's that big building behind. Oh, behind us. And then they closed down. And then they closed, they closed down. down. Yeah. And then that's when we said, okay, when we, if we open up, we have to put in a bridal store. Oh, okay. A okay. bridal dresses, but uh, to start with the tuxedo, we introduced the barong. Okay, so tell Which, me what a barone. I mean, is it, is it just? I mean, what what is that? It's a Filipino dress shirt okay. that we use formal, informal, for informal and formal event, mostly formal event. Okay, um, um, and it's good for weddings. Okay, and um, it's very light and airy. So the um, president who just got. Uh, Sworn in, they wear barong tagalog. Oh. They don't wear suits. Okay. okay. So like very formal, very upscale events in the Philippines. Okay. They do wear barong okay. tagalog. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. That's so. That is one of the things that caught my attention um, when I when I was here back in 2014, 2015, uh-huh. and that was you guys had a whole. You guys, you guys have traditional wedding gowns and traditional tuxedos, but then you have a whole section. Uh, th- that is what Filipino based culture. Uh, yeah, that's the national uh, outfit for the guys. Okay, actually the barone, and then barone. but you have dresses for 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 girls, uh, yes. for girls that are too. also Filipino yeah. as yes. well. Yes, okay. Filipiniana dresses. Okay, and now how does that how does that do? I know that Fremont is definitely a very multicultural city. Um, ha- has that helped you guys having having that department in your sh- definitely, in your shop? especially during. Uh, the pandemic time, okay, because everybody tend to um, <clears throat> make the wedding smaller, oh. so their thought process was like, oh, let's wear barong instead of suit, because oh. now we only have like ten people, <laughs> 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 then we don't need to be like super formal uh-huh. with a tuxedo. Let's okay. just wear barong. So. A lot of people ended up uh, using barong. Okay, so how does that work though? Because I mean, do you have uh, seamstress or some place that makes those here? Do you have to import those from the Philippines? The Philippines, yeah. We yeah. actually them. support about three towns in the Philippines. You support three towns yeah, in the where we, where they get the fabrics, and then where they make the barong, and the other town is where they hand embroidered the barong. Wow! So it's yeah. a tedious process to make one. Barong. Um, so yeah, wow. it's not just one place. Like so, this yeah. So uh, and and I mean, do you guys go over there and like um, meet with those different people, like the the different uh, um, 
people that are doing the fabric and the yes, styling yeah. and all that. So we're actually going again uh, November. So we went 2019 <clears throat> to source again. Wow. So we would like go back and forth to source because the um, the original Barong Tagalog is made out of pineapple fiber. So pineapple, really? yes. So the the leaves of the pineapple, they cut it, they scrape it, they wash it, they knot it one by one, <laughs> they spool it, and then they weave it. Wow! So that's one uh, part in the Philippines, and, and that's that. It, and the, the, that's how the shirts are made that you have here. Uh, some of them. Okay. Some, some of, of them. them. Yeah. The high the. The original one, but then uh, they came up with another fabric which is less expensive and like more made by machine. Okay. So we have those two. Wow. But nowadays it seems like uh, kids, or not even kids, like people here, they're like they want that sustainable. Right. Right. Fabric. Yeah. 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 So it's very popular, and a lot of kids are like, well, I'm, I would I wouldn't say they're kids, but <laughs> the grooms. <laughs> Because they're like twenties right, and thirties, right, right. the grooms <laughs> yeah. tend to like it, and they go for it, and they go extra. They add embroidery of their initials, wow. the date of their wedding, their special. Oh, is, is that something that you can customize here yes. as well? There's one groom. The face of the dog <laughs> was on the cuff of the Barong Tagalog. The face of his dog. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so you, but you can customize that embroidery and yes, stuff here. Yes. Okay. So we had our guy uh, sketch the face of the dog and embroidered it. That's awesome. It's that detailed. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we will have the rest of this conversation in just a minute. But before we do that, I want to tell you about Dale Hardware. Dale Hardware is one of our sponsors, and they have been invested in this community for over 65 years. Dale Hardware has been helping people make Fremont their home, and they are still doing that today. But I want to tell you about a special event that they have coming up on August 6th. Dale Hardware has the largest display of Milwaukee tools and a retail store in the country. And they are having the grand opening with an invitation to our community to come in and celebrate with them and to see uh, what they've done into the store. And there's an invitation to you as well. On August 6th, all day that Saturday, come into Dale Hardware. There's going to be special vendors. There's going to be special things going on, giveaways. You're not going to want to miss it. So put that in your calendar, Dale Hardware on Thornton Avenue, August 6th. Come in, say hi. I will be there live and I would love to see you. Love to meet you. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about um, COVID um, because I know COVID has affected a lot of small businesses and I know that it, especially when you're kind of banking on sales uh, like this, especially in-person sales. You guys really seem to uh, value the in-person aspect of selling wedding dresses. Um, and I know that COVID kind of like really uh, puts a damper on, <laughs> put a damper on in-person uh, connections. So uh, how do, how have things been for you uh, through for the last couple of years? How, how has business been and how has your business been? So uh, during pandemic, definitely it affected us 60% down <laughs> 60 percent down 60 percent wow. down on sales um we survived we got some help from the government as okay. uh, yeah everybody else did yeah. which is a very good blessing because that kind of helped us through and pay the rent because yeah. we still have to pay the rent no right. matter what yeah um as i mentioned the barong tagalog kind of helped us because a lot of people focused on a smaller event and they felt that the barong tagalog was um, formal enough, but laid back enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And it might be—I don't know. Maybe I'm maybe I'm uh, presuming something here. Is it a little uh, less expensive as well? Because I'm when I think of a tux, I think of all the pieces that go to a tux, like the shirt, the you know. But is the barone about the same price? Or I'm just curious. Uh, is um, it- well, barong is um, it's slightly. Inexpensive unless you go for the uh, Embro- the, the pure 
pineapple okay. uh, fabric. Okay. Then it's a little bit more oh, <laughs> than wow. the tuxedo. Wow. But Before it's very I leave beautiful. today, I'm gonna have to. I want to feel one of those uh, pineapple shirts because that sounds awesome. That's really really cool. Yep. We'll show you the uh, and you will see the hand embroidered versus machine embroidery. Okay. The difference. It's it's really beautiful. Wow. The hand embroidered. That's awesome. It so, also helped us when we have this much uh, bridal dresses when that oh, pandemic. You already had the inventory. Uh, we have the inventory, and then we have from the low price to you know the mid, and they you know they look for it that fast go oh. uh, bridal dress that they can use okay. for a small wedding. Okay, so that that kind of helped. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So you were down 60% in sales. Mm -hmm. And then has it improved? Has things have things gotten better? We've uh, we're recovering since uh this year beginning of this year. Um brides been showing up. Oh, that's <laughs> which is good. which that's is excellent. Good. Yeah. Um So I mean, yeah, so l let me ask you that mm -hmm. too because um it seems that I mean a lot of places were going to like appointment only, and I think bridal shops are one of those places that you kind of just have an open door. I mean, how has that been for you guys? Oh, so since pandemic, we've been appointment only. Oh, has, that kind of okay, helped yeah. with the uh, managing the flow of people, just for their safety and mm -hmm. our safety as well. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that way is better for us because um, staffing is. A little bit challenging nowadays, right. so that kind of helps us, so that we can yeah. help them better. Better, yeah. 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 So yeah. when I was here several years ago, you did have um, other staff. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, is it do you still have other staff now, or for weekdays, just the two of us? Okay, but for weekends, we have uh, one other help. Okay, wow. Wow, yeah, COVID has affected so many different things, and um, I and it all, I mean, it's kind of weird. I know that I've talked about this with other people and we were just talking about this as well um it's just interesting how um there's people needing jobs and yet there's so many places looking to hire but you just can't find mm -hmm. like it doesn't seem like the, there's a there's a it matches up like the people that are actually looking for jobs yeah. are finding the jobs that, yeah. <laughs> that are out it's there it's kind of confusing why there are so many that is looking for a job but then yeah we can't find anybody yeah. <laughs> to hire yeah yeah do you guys have anything right now that is in the works? Like, do you have, like, uh, like coming out of COVID, have you learned anything or kind of adjusted your business um, vision, your business, business uh, model? Um, is there anything that you're kind of, like, you know, pushing for in one direction now that, that's helping out or um, just kind of trying to stick with what you've been doing? Uh, my feeling is that um, since pandemic, people are like, I need it now. Okay. I want it now. So okay. stock is important. Mm. Um, unlike before that people can wait. Now it's like, oh, life is short. <laughs> <laughs> Let me go find my dress. Oh, I, I found it. I'm going home with it. Uh, same with the uh, Barong Tagalog. It's like, oh, let's just go stop by and see what they have and grab it and go. Yeah. So I think that's the model, business okay. model that we're yeah. gonna go forward is to have more in stock okay. versus having everything order. Mm. But we will still do the order of orders if you yeah. yeah. But uh it would be nice because everybody's like have a shorter lead time now. Mm -hmm. Unlike a few years ago, they plan a year ahead. Now they're like six months, three months, so they need it quickly. Okay. Yeah. What I and mean, this is kind of like maybe off the subject a little bit, but maybe in, maybe in wrapping things up here, um, have you guys learned anything specifically uh, from meeting so many different brides or so many different grooms getting ready for marriage? Have you learned anything from meeting all these different people over the last 16 years that's kind of helped you guys understand maybe relationships? Or I guess what I, would, I, guess what I would ask is, is there something that you would say um, here's something that we have learned that we'd love to share with any bride or any groom uh, that might come through the doors as they as they embark on their um, you know their future marriage. Is there something that you've learned through this uh, this industry uh, that you would share? Open your heart and keep an open mind. <laughs> yeah, open heart and open mind. Yeah, yeah. and everything. Yeah. It's like looking for a dress, you have to have an open mind. <laughs> yeah, right. Keeping your uh, special somebody keep an open heart yeah right <laughs> so yeah that's to great. keep the the the, the fire and the, the love <laughs> <laughs> arnold have you have you learned anything or anything that uh, has stuck out to you 
Life's too short. Trust. Mm, Keep trust. your faith. That's great. That's great. Well, I'm excited. I'm glad I got to meet you guys or see you guys again after these years. And um, I hope that uh, you continue to succeed and you. Uh, you hope your shop does well. Um, I'm excited to be able to pass your story along to uh, the listeners and uh, all the best for you. I hope hope things go well. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate it. You've been listening to the Fremont Podcast. Be sure to subscribe wherever it is that you listen so you don't miss an episode. And if you're so inclined, leave a kind review so that others can find the podcast. To stay connected with us, you can find links to our social media and other content at thefremontpodcast.com. This episode was hosted, edited, and produced by Ricky B. Music provided through soundstripe.com. I'm Gary Williams. Join us next week on the Fremont Podcast. Muggins Media.